G'day and welcome back to my channel. Now look, look at this, I'm in space. Yes, I'm on the Artemis rocket. <laughs> no, I'm not. This is going to be my new set. I'm yet to populate it with things that are more modeling like, but you get the idea. Now, 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 I'm here to talk about this, this box, right? This box of mystery. Now, I've done a number of videos where I've talked about how I really enjoy apples, okay? I do, I do. And other people enjoy apples, and those who like apples don't have any problem with anybody else if they're having, you know, rhubarbs or mangoes or, or anything like that. No, we don't, we don't mind. As long as you're doing scale modeling, we don't care what flavor of kit you're building. Well, there's those people that build tangerines, right? And, and they are so excited about tangerines, which is fine. But then they don't want anyone else to build anything else. They say, you must build tangerines. Of course, it's absurd. And I get so upset about it, I've refused to build those sort of kits. Um, half because I find them boring, and the other half because, you know, just the, the way the fanboys carry on. And of course, if you've watched my channel, you know that apples, airfix, and tangerines are Tamiya, okay? Now, that brings me to this box, all right? Now, I haven't found a Tamiya kit yet that I can really get excited about. They're boring for me, okay? I know they fit well, okay? They're overpriced here, they may be cheaper where you are, but basically they're just for painting, okay? There's no really, there's not much in the assembly, that's what I'm trying to say, at least not the ones I've experienced, you know, because I've built aircraft and I've built armor, and I went all into that in another video and you can go have a look at that one, okay? Because I said in that one I couldn't buy them and I couldn't build them, well of course not. I do ships now, all right? But quite a number of you had said, look, Harry, okay, we see where you're coming from. You like the construction. You like something that's intricate and detailed. You want to get into it. And sure, the, the armor and the aircraft are usually, not all of them, I know there's some big 132nd scale Spitfires and things that are a big, you know, big build, but the kind of things that I've looked at are very easy to build. And that bores me to death, okay? There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing to fix which is what you guys like, and I understand, fully understand. But I I like to you know get into the nitty gritty and file things and fit things and all the rest of it. So you guys said, look, there are Tamiya kits, Harry, you are going to enjoy. And then the backer found me this. All right, now it's missing its original box. So it's a mystery. It is a mystery kit, but I am assured whatever is in this box this Tamiya flavored tangerine thing, right? It's going to be a kit that I'm going to really enjoy. So let's see if we can change my dislike of Tamiya, my boredom of the tangerines. Let's see if there actually is a Tamiya kit that I would enjoy building. Interested? All right, roll the music. <laughs> So, what is in this box? As I've said, it's Tamiya. That's all we know. It's a Tamiya kit, and Chris assures me this is something that I'll really enjoy building. Well, you know, I have my doubts. I really have my doubts, but we shall see. All right, without further ado. Oh, it's a lot of bubble wrap. It's, it's a lot of bubble wrap. Uh, so, look. We'll Okay, oh, hang on, what have we got here? Oh, what is it? Is it a motorbike? It's a Honda. I think that says Honda. Is, is it a Honda motorbike? I don't know. It's got numbers, it's got sticky bits, it's very big, whatever it is, it's very big. Uh, let's um, let's see, definitely Honda, right? And uh, Chris knows I like Hondas, I drive a Honda, I've had Honda motorbikes. I mean, you know, I'm into the whole Honda thing. What have we got here? It's it's very um, it's very Honda-ish. Yes. Okay, we got rid of all the uh, boxing. Let's let's see what the packaging's got to say. Uh, we'll, we'll pull out the first sprue. Well, um, I know it's a Honda rocket ship. Do you think it's a rocket? It could be. I mean, uh, it's not Asimov, is it? Not Asimov. Look, I don't know. I don't know. There's um, well, there's a sun visor there. Or something. It's very exciting. What is it? Oh look, um, we got a person. Yeah, it's got a person with this. So is that a motorbike rider? Um, don't know. 
Could be, well, he's got goggles on. So it could be a motor, could be a really old, early Honda motorbike. I don't know. It's very strange. Hang on, what's this? Nose cone. No, it must be a spaceship. It must be a spaceship. Yes. Yes, it's, it's Honda's new spaceship. I don't know. Yeah, maybe you know. Oh, hang on. There's wheels. Oh, okay, okay. Right, let's see what's going on here. There's a big motor. There's lots of stuff there. Oh, there's going to be a lot to explore in this. A um, bit more of this nose cone. I don't think it's a spaceship. I don't think it's a spaceship. I think what we're looking at here is some form of... Yeah, look. There's pipes. There's wheels. I think we've got a Formula One car. Ooh, this could be interesting. Okay, let me debag all this and we'll have a look through and see what we can find. there we have all the parts and I don't know the part count I can't see it written anywhere because we don't have the box you see we don't have the box that's that's the whole reason this was a mystery kit mystery kit no box now we get some lovely chrome parts I mean I'll go into detail later but you know they're um, really nicely done we've got black parts we've got the rubber wheels we've got some wires we've got lots of white parts which are sort of bodies and pipes and things right okay and that nose cone there in case you want to fly into orbit and then there's a whole lot of gray parts which is obviously the engine and a few other things here so what i think we need to do is i think we need to get a hold of the instructions and see what this is all about haha <laughs> revealed at last it's a honda f1 yes it is so there you go i was right it was a formula one car it's 1 12th scale and according to the specs here by Tamiya, 333 millimeters long. That's a good one. That's over a foot in the old measurement. So this looks exciting. I've seen photos of this thing online, I must admit. I did know what it was, yes. Look, we'll get into this. Let's go through the instructions and pull out some parts and have a bit of a look through. I don't know if we'll get through everything, but we'll get a feel for this because I've never built a Formula 1 car. And I must say, this does have my interest picked. Alrighty, because I'm a bit OCD, I kind of do things in colour order. It'll make some sense. But now let's have a look. The instructions, well, there's a lot to read. There's a lot to read there. And certainly Tammy gives you a whole lot of um, background and sort of explanation of the car and the history. So um, I'll have a look at that later and explain it in another video. But for now, we're just having a quick look at parts and things. Now, it starts off, and this is the old Tammy type instructions, which I sort of don't mind, really. I do like all this sort of writing. This is like what Airfix used to do. You would get lots of discussion telling you what things were and where to put them, which is really good. And you're getting instructions here as to what colours things are. Look, it's not too bad. I, I don't mind this. So as to be expected from a Tamiya kit, as I'm told, all the panel lines are very fine. I don't even know if you can see them there. Can you see those details? They are super fine. So really, you can't put too much paint on this thing, otherwise all that detail is going to run away which has often been a criticism of mine for Tamiya, but uh, this only needs a coat of ivory, and it's already pretty well that colour. I mean, you could just put a gloss coat over this and say, look, I did it! Yeah, you could cheat. You could cheat. But we'll see. The actual car is sort of an ivory colour, so that's quite good. There's um, certainly no flash. Well, we don't expect that. We don't expect to see any flash. The sprue points are probably an older style. I know the modern ones are really thin, aren't they? Uh, spray points, they're not bad. They're certainly much easier than they would be on um, an old Airfix kit or something like that that I'm used to. So, I mean, that's it's to be expected. It's all going to cut away nicely, and we expect that it's all going to fit. So the instructions kick off with you putting in the frames. So there they are. You've got frames there. Okay. And we assume this is all going to fit like a dream. So, you know, that's um, that's a given. Now, I know I complain about Tamiya that it's all too easy and, you know, it'll all go together too fast. Sure, but let's look further on because I think I'm going to be quite busy here. Despite my complaints in the past that Tamiya kits, you know, go together too well, so I'm kind of bored because I'm really used to the experience of having to make things fit. There's a lot of fiddliness in here. 
I sort of had looked through the instructions before and went, wow, there's a lot here to keep me busy. I mean, I have a whole lot of things to add here, which is part of, I assume, they're some sort of, well, I don't know. Well, looks like Tamiya answers my question here. Part two, or you know, assembly section two here, right? That is construction of the master cylinder. So there you go. This is handy for me to know what it is I'm making. Because I, I like to know. I don't like to just put blobs together and go, well, what are these? I mean, I usually do my research. I know what things are. If you've seen my ship videos, you know I really go to great detail on how all the things are and how they should work and how they should go. And I need to know that sort of stuff to enjoy a kit. So this is quite good. It tells me here their master cylinder. That's good. So that's what it is. Three master cylinders. That's interesting. Was it three different braking systems? Very clever. So um, one was the bulkheads, two master cylinders, three beginning of those body panels, which we've already sort of looked at. Well, these are the internal ones, are they? Yeah, well, actually, you put this, this goes inside that. Yes, it's all that sort of stuff. Uh, nice rivets, I'm not going to count them. I mean, it's just nice. It's a nice clean kit. Uh, I, that's what you'd expect. The, the thing will be when I build it to see sort of how it goes together, but I really don't think we'll have any problems. And I'm liking all these little blue areas, I'm sure. That indicates where I'm supposed to put the cement. We've got some uh, pressure gauge and temperature oil, all these sort of things. Decals, the tachometer. Let's have a look. So there they are. They're, they're not the best, really. I suppose they do the job. I don't know if there's something better aftermarket. The um, the decal sheet itself is yellowed a bit, but I could probably fix that by putting it out in the sun. A lot of these things, like the stripes and the big um, the big uh, Japanese red dot. <coughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think I'll mask and I'll paint those rather than um, using decals because these things are going to fold and crip. And, you know, I never have much luck with big long decals. Never. Much easier to mask and to airbrush. The numbers, yeah, they might be usable and I'm certainly probably going to use the names. John Sturges is probably the better one. Or is it Surtees? John Surtees. Yeah, okay. All right. I don't know my Formula 1 drivers from then. I was only a toddler back in the 60s. I remember Jack Brabham racing, and I remember that from the 60s, and he had a big green sort of Lotus, I think it was, and uh, very similar to this, sort of the same sort of open sort of vehicle, and uh, I picked up a, um, well, my dad picked up a, a great big plastic one that you get from the BP service station if you know you bought a whole tank of petrol and uh, you can actually sit in it if you're little I could just fit in it my brother could really fit in it and we used to push each other around the yard pretending we were racing car drivers but anyhow so there you go so don't know we might be able to use devils or I might have to get some aftermarket so um, we'll see there's probably look they're probably okay those gauges for what you need probably okay now this is rather nice, just underneath this whole decally, the sort of dash panel thing, there's painting and it actually goes into quite some detail here, nicely explaining to you sort of how it was put together, how it was painted, some tips and things on uh, painting and, you know, basically what to do. That's, that's rather helpful. That's really good. I do like that. Now we've got lots and lots and lots of parts here for the motor and the suspension and some of the interior details. So let's sort of work through this. I won't do everything individually, I'm just having a look. So you've got workable suspension by the looks here. You've got a metal spring, which was um, part of, which is in here. We've got some springs, we have some piping, uh, we have some wiring. So that's all going to come into um, play when we detail the motors. Again, you get some detailed explanation here. Step six of basically how to set up those shock absorbers. It's all very useful. It's very friendly. It's very useful. I can sort of see if, if this is indicative of what Tammy kits are like that you guys have been building. You can see why you like them. It's um, very helpful. Very helpful. So that all goes together. You've got a whole lot of complicated uh, work here to do. I'm assuming it's going to be a lot better than my little scary kit, that Fiat, which did have a lot of nice complex stuff. It was fun, but as I said, after you assembled it, the whole thing then collapsed under its own weight. Well, once you painted it, the weight of the paint collapsed the kit. The suspension all snapped. It was hopeless. Hopefully Tamiya is a lot better engineered. And in fact, I'm quite sure that it is. So again, we're working through. You're basically building up sections here to um, to get through to the the front with the radiator you're going in. Look, excuse my ignorance, I never built a Formula 1 car. This is interesting. These, um, the water pipes, this might be some sort of cooling system here. It's rather clever. So uh, I've seen it, the people that have built it, but um, 
didn't really grasp what it was. The motor, well, the motor, of course, is mainly going to be this sprue. And the detail, well, look, you know, it's unsurprisingly very good, very fine, very nicely detailed. So, you know, this is um, what you guys are always telling me about these kits, how nice they are. But the thing is, that's going to impress me and that's going to keep me interested for this build is the complexity of it. And there's a lot going on. This is the thing a lot of people said, oh, you don't like Tamiya, but you've got all those Wingnut Wings kits. But the thing is, the Wingnut Wings kits are involved. They're complex. Not only that, you've got to get it right. Otherwise, if you if you bugger up making the cradle of the Wingnut Wings aeroplane, you know, the canopy, the, the, where the pilot sits, if you get that wrong or slightly, you know, put too much paint on it, when you're going to put the fuselage on, it doesn't fit. You must check each stage. You must be meticulous in your building, you know. So there's a lot of construction work, which is what I like. So here again, lots of detail telling us what to do. Painting guide as you go. Terrific stuff. Uh, Mr. Tammy is giving us lots of hints. So I'm liking all of this. I'm going to have a lot of fun making this motor. I can see that it's just about a model in itself. So that looks really encouraging. So, so far, I haven't seen anything I didn't like. So once the motor's in, yeah, we're going to be wiring. So that'll be fun. So we do the complete wiring here. That's quite good. So uh, not only have you got the electrical wiring, there's the fuel lines that go in as well. So I've seen this all done online. I watch other people's builds. And the more and more I watch this kit going together, the more excited I got. Then you've got all these pipes, which are white. I, I, I'm amazed they're white. But um, did they have like the, um, the spray on stuff that you heat on, you know, that they do these days? What's that called? Tell me what that's called, you know, where they basically powder coat things, you know, and then they heat it up and they, um, ceramic, I think they are. All the exhaust pipes are hollowed out. Isn't that true? Isn't that true? I mean, it's it's a lovely kit. I, I can't say anything bad about it at all. And I think I will just be engrossed in the destruction. Painting is fairly simple. It's just ivory body. You know, you've got to paint up a few little motor bits and all the rest of it. You know, it's not a great big huge. I don't have to put a camo scheme on it and weather it and everything. No, we'll do a little bit of weathering, but usually you know, race cars stay fairly clean. I'll have a look at some photos. And there's not much. They don't let them get dirty. I mean, they're immaculate sort of vehicles, as far as I know. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> I'm sure you will. So that'll be fun. Look at all that. We've got all that to look forward to. That is going to be great. And then we move across here. Well, what are we doing here? Torsion bar, universal joint, rear suspension. I'm loving that it's telling me everything, what it is. I'm getting complete like photographs of how it should look when it goes together, which is invaluable. So, you know, very helpful. Just like Wingnut Wings does, they show you what the completed thing should look like. Uh, they, in the Wingnut Wings kits, they have photos of the real you know, aircraft, so you can see what's going on. But I'm liking all this. This is all good. This is going to keep me very, very busy. And... It's going to be one of those sort of builds where you you build a bit, you paint a bit, you build a bit, you paint a bit. I like that because I don't I don't like that you slam together a tank and then you spend weeks painting it. You know, or you just you know you paint the interior of an aircraft, but then you seal it all up and then you've got to spend forever painting and weathering it. That doesn't interest me. I just don't get my jollies from that. The reason I enjoy my shipbuilding so much is you, you paint a few parts, you make a sub-assembly, you know, you might do a little bit of touch-up on it. You, know, you paint a few other parts, you do another sub-assembly, or you build up a little sub-assembly and then it gets... You know, everything is in stages and in moderation. So I don't spend weeks and weeks and weeks just painting. I mean, the biggest thing you might do is on the old sailing ships is you might have to paint the hull sides, you know. But I, know, I kind of enjoy that. I know what it is. Ships are different, and I really enjoy them. Now, I showed you the... Um, the pilot, the driver, <laughs> the racing car driver. I showed you showed you him before. He looked rather nice. Uh, we'll see. He might be big enough that I could actually make an effort to paint. Because I'm not usually very good at painting figures. I just don't have the patience for it. Having said that, I once put a moustache on a scale, 172 scale pig in a Porco Rosso aeroplane. I mean, you know, that was just a challenge to see if I could do it. Now, wheels. Wheels are always fun. I think with... Motor vehicles, the wheels are almost like, you know, when you put the barrels on a battleship and then it looks really good, you know, and I don't know, it's, it's, I don't know what the equivalent is with aircraft, but there's that sort of final thing, you know, that you put the tracks on a tank and then you put the, the barrel on it and bang, it comes alive, you know, it starts to have the elements that make it the thing that it is. So wheels, yeah, now we've got these fantastic, look at them, you know, you wonder if I really need to repaint them, That that's rather nice, although... The actual colour from looking at 
photos of the vehicle was more sort of a titanium. So um, yeah, I'll paint them titanium. So they will. But they, you know, this kit, you can practically build it without painting it. You can just build it out of the boxes. Tim has sort of done a few things. Oh, look, flash, flash, flash alert, flash alert, horror, shock, send it back to the factory. It's no good. Throw this kit away. <laughs> there's a little bit, yeah, there's a bit of something gone wrong there. It's actually come loose. Oh, I'll have to address that, see what's going on there. But I don't think it's anything of any major concern because what you build up here, you've got, you've got inserts, you've got rim, you've got things, you've got brakes, yeah. But it all looks quite good and... I don't know what the state of these tyres. I don't want to unpack this just yet. But, um, well, they're still bending and they don't look solid. Like, you know how they go kind of hard. The rubber sort of leaches out all of its rubberiness. So um, we'll see. But they're big fat tyres. You know, how can you complain? This kit shows a lot of potential for the kind of things that I like. Okay, so this isn't really a review of a Tamiya kit so much as to you know gush about it because I'm not I'm not a big Tamiya fan I haven't really enjoyed Tamiya up to now and this is the thing but the fans after the last couple of years have said look Harry you might like motorbikes I did look for a motorbike kit I haven't found one yet but I probably will build a motorbike down the track because I've been looking into that I've been watching a few people build them and gone hey yeah okay detail intricacy a lot of assembly this is the thing a lot of assembly I don't want this thing just to be put together in an afternoon that will bore me to death, okay? I need something that is going to keep me busy for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. And, you know, and I have to really think about, think about the whole construction. So there you go. And then when it's finished, that's what it looks like. So, you know, and you can have fun running around the floor and have the cat chasing it. That'll be great. <laughs> good. What else we got here? Yeah. Okay, so you get a number seven or a number 12. I'm kind of leaning towards a number seven. That being my, uh, my favorite number. Yep. Seven's good. Seven's very good. Lots of help all the way through. Very nice sprue map, as you'd expect. Okay, and um, there's quite a lot of parts. I haven't seen anywhere where it tells me how many parts, but there's a shitload. There's a shitload. That's a technical term. <laughs> so, this is my very light-hearted review of the Tamiya Honda F1, which may just be the first Tamiya kit that I'm going to enjoy building i hope so if you've built this kit let me know let me know what your experience was like or if you've built any of the formula one from tamia i'd really like to know sort of what you thought and um you know if there's any things to watch out for because i've never built a formula one car before i assume it's you know it's just like building any particular model but don't know i i really don't know the process and i don't know the pitfalls anyhow there we go harry may change his tune yet and start to love tamia <gasps> shock horror i know yes there you go i know you you like to watch my angst videos you know the videos that basically get the most number of hits for me are those where i'm hating on something you know i'm basically saying bad things about something or getting upset about something so this video where i'm actually happy well no one's going to watch it are they just you and me and so having said that goodbye mate <laughs> yes it's goodbye from australia and it's hooray from harry Houdini. <laughs>